Mm. Hi guys, Jason here from Empire Distributing. Here to talk to you a little bit about push button ignition. Now this isn't full blown electronic ignition. Um, electronic ignition would be for the consumer that wanted to use a remote control or a light a fire feature from a switch on a wall or possibly from their telephone. The push button ignition is for the consumer that maybe isn't real comfortable with match lit ignition where they have to lean over their fire pit with a lighter as they turn the gas on. In this situation they can turn the gas on and press a button that will send a spark to the burner. So it's a push button ignition or a PBIK. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few different versions of that. A PBIK kit really is nothing more than the sparker electrode, some leads of wire, both orange and green, and you get a little sparker box. That's what comes in a PBIK kit. Now we also keep in stock the paver block mounting kit. So this will be an additional piece that you get in that kit. These side wings are adjustable to adjust for different widths if you wanted to remove a block in a, or a paver and install this in its place. But it gives you the hole for your push button ignition. It also gives you the key valve factory installed. So you'd fasten this plate to the course below. This gives you a nice point for ignition and key valve all in one. So we have the PBIK with the mounting kit or just the PBIK by itself. It's really up to you. I'd like to take a second and just go through some of the tools. If you need to fact or need to install one of these in the field, you're going to need some additional tools. Uh, first of all, you're going to need a drill. It's nice to have a stepper bit. And then you're going to need a drill bit that's uh, about a 3 16 to drill some holes in this plate. I always like to have dielectric grease. This is just running off a AAA battery. There's not a lot of power there, so some dielectric grease is going to keep the moisture out and minimize corrosion. So if you don't have some of this, throw a little bit in your toolbox. Uh, it comes in handy. A pair of pliers. A couple pairs of pliers are going to be important. You'll see more on that in a moment. Just a regular screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, to actually mount the, the PBIK Sparker electrode to the plate itself. So make sure you have these tools on hand. If you don't have them, this installation gets really tough. You could potentially damage this sparker, which is very, very fragile. This white uh, ceramic or now plastic insulator will chip and break easily. If you chip it and break it, this will begin to arc below the burner or where you don't want it to arc and it won't work. If this is chipped, there's not going to be any warranty on it. You need to replace it. So this part's a little bit fragile. I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to ask my cameraman to kind of tilt down and take a look at this plate. Maybe zoom in. We're going to just take a look at this area right here. So what I have in front of me is a 180,000 BTU burner. And in this application, we're going to install a PBIK. You can see I already have the hole drilled and the mounting holes drilled. And what I want to point out is that we want to keep this sparker electrode out here on this perimeter of this burner. We don't want it in the center where it's going to receive a ton of heat day in and day out. We want to keep it in the coolest environment that we possibly can. So this outside corner works great. You'll also notice these two jets are pointing towards the hole or towards where the sparker is going to be. That's by design. We want to put as much gas and flame to this spark to get it lit quickly uh, when the system is turned on or when the homeowner wants to turn the system on. So what I'd like to do is actually just kind of you know, hold this in place, eyeball roughly where we want it. The, I, the goal here is to get the tip of this sparker about a quarter inch or so away from one of these tips of, of these jets. So just kind of eyeball it, make a little mark on your plate, a center mark, use your stepper bit from your drill bit or from your drill and drill yourself about a three quarter inch hole into that plate. Then what you want to do is take the leads from your push button ignition, just drop them down through this hole, feed them down through there and reach underneath, pull through the slack. You're going to want to be careful not to catch these wires on the edge because you'll scrape them and that's when you start getting arcing in places where you don't want it to be. So at this point, I'll just kind of dry fit that or take a look at it. And really what I'm trying to find is my distance from the tip of this sparker to the tip of the jet. And again, we're looking for that eighth inch, three sixteenths, quarter inch, somewhere in there. These sparkers come out of the box perfectly straight. You can see this one has a slight bend to it. If you ever need to bend a sparker, and again, try not to position these where they, where they want to be. If that way you don't have to bend them. If you do, it's very important to use two pairs of pliers. If you just use one and you bend it against the ceramic, you're going to chip this and it will begin to arc below. So for this one, what you would do is hold one pair of pliers at the base and bend it to what you need or where you want it to be. So always use two pairs of pliers. Try not to bend it at all if you can avoid it. Once you have this in place and you've got a rough idea where you like it, just mark the two additional holes with your Sharpie. Pull this out of the way. Take the wires out so you don't potentially damage them. Use your 316 drill bit, 
drill those two extra mounting holes in there, reinsert this piece, and then it does come with fasteners to bolt this to the plate. Just to save time, I'm not going to take that step at this point. I want to keep this moving along. Let's say you get it bolted in, and this is nice and straight, but you're a little further from this jet than you want to be. Remember, these burners are just twisted on the plate. You can twist it back or twist it forward a little bit to get exactly what you like. So at that point, this is in place. I'm just going to connect our sparker box. This sparker box comes with a AAA battery. You just remove the cover, install the AAA battery. Two terminals on the back. This is where you put a little bit of your dielectric grease on this end to keep those connections waterproof. Orientation does not matter on these two wires, okay? So just plug them in, make sure they're on there all the way. They are fragile, so make sure you push them on nice and straight. So once this is installed, I'm gonna hold this in position. Again, about that 3 16 or so away. At the same time, I'm gonna press the sparker and you can see the action we get. That's gonna be enough temperature to light that gas. Now, if your sparker is too close, You'll get a spark, but you can notice that spark is a little bit yellow. That's not the hottest spark we can get. If I open that gap up slightly, and I'm going to go a little bit bigger here, you're going to see that spark is a lot longer, and it's blue. The blue spark is going to be hotter. It's going to be easier for that spark to light that fuel for you. So if you notice it's sparking, but you don't get it to light consistently, you may want to open that gap slightly. Of course, if you go too far, it won't be able to spark at all. So position is important on these. One thing I like to point out on push button ignition, if this system doesn't work because maybe it rained extremely hard and this electrode is wet, you can still match light this system. Simply turn your key valve on, use your match light, which we'll go through in another segment. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please call us at Empire Distributing. Thank you.